I hope that makes sense. All right, so welcome to the first of what we hope are several fireside chats here at Catabout. Depends on how rowdy we get. <laughs> um, Hopefully very good. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Jonathan Wells. I'm the bar manager here at Gadabout. Uh, I just make sure that the bartenders are doing their thing and I'm an instrument of Josh's will. I like instruments. <laughs> I'm Joshua Martinez, I'm the beverage director here at Catabout, um, and welcome to our little thing that we're doing. Um, essentially, every month we're going to go over a spirit that's going to correspond to a cocktail class that we will be giving both virtually and at the space here at Catabout. We'll get into that a little bit later. Right now, we want to talk about and we want to drink. Whiskey. Some whiskey. Whiskey. Sponge it. Yes. It's a little brown. I'm just drinking it old fashioned. Keeping it simple. And I'm just drinking whiskey. <laughs> Keeping it real simple. You're not, you're not ruining your whiskey. The old, old fashioned. Yeah. Alright, so uh, our first. Uh, cocktail and virtual cocktail class will be whiskey. We want to get into the history of whiskey and since this is the first one of these that we're doing, we just want to get into a little more of just the history of distillation period. Yeah. You want to take that away? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been, tr the history of distillation kind of has us back and forth in this overall idea of placing history of alcohol is kind of a lot of tall tales mixed with facts mixed with hyperbole it just it's kind of all over the place um so we just kind of take a lot of rough estimates on things um not saying that there aren't actually like known dates of when this group was building a still or using stills um it's just kind of a very muddy water so we do know for a uh, for a fact that um the Irish monks in what was it, about 1100? Yeah, 11, 11, 100 AD to 1300 AD. Were, they were doing like a form of a very raw whiskey. Um, it wouldn't be any whiskey that we would, what we would call whiskey today. It would be more like moonshine. Um, it would have been very hot. Um, they would probably have uh, sweetened it down with all sorts of botanicals. Even almost kind of getting more into a gin type kind of category. Essentially, I mean, what, what what you're looking at at that point is just this sort of rudimentary white dog, straight off the still, not proof down at all. So, I mean, and again, we're we're guessing a little bit, you know. But I mean, consider the source, people who are distilling things and getting drunk, and they're trying to keep records. <laughs> not really. I mean, that, that's the original drunk history. Yeah, honestly. So. I mean, at, at the end of the day, the uh, this sort of Irish monastic spirit that came from grains, which grew all over the UK, and so they have more grains than grapes, so they distill from that. So you have these rudimentary forms of beer that end up becoming this sort of uh, really rough around the edges, um, even even for today's standards of what you would consider white dog, mm. really rough around the edges kind of stuff. And I'm sure, like John said, that they had to add sugar and botanicals and almost kind of like aromatize and sweeten it just to make it palatable. Because again, you're talking about 11 to 1300. They're, they're in much ice laying around anywhere. So, um, and we'll, we'll get into that more with the, the cocktail portion you see of this. When you see a bunch of like Irish monks sitting around like, Hey Patrick, look what I made over here. I'm oh, sorry, that was more Scottish than anything. <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, like, you know, look what I made. Just drink it, it's great, you're gonna enjoy it. And just, and that's, woo! <laughs> woo! And that's, and, and, and that's, that's how it just kind of proliferated. It went from Ireland to Jeez. Scotland. Yeah, see, segue, that's what I was doing. But, uh, we'll, we'll uh, for, for Ireland, um, 1608. Um, is the first known whiskey distillery in the world. And well, and this also, sorry, cut you off there. 
Now, this kind of goes to this other kind of muddy history of dis, uh, distillation, where we, for the longest time, we knew that the Arabs had been distilling perfume, um, and they had been doing that for since about the 12, uh, 1200s, and then with like the Silk Road and uh, trade between like, Venice and the uh, Middle East, you started getting distillation in early Renaissance Italy, and then that moved through the monastic orders throughout uh, Europe to where you started getting, you know, uh, brandies because everybody's making wine, and then they're like, hey, let's put this in a still and call it a day. And then that's now kind of, we're trying to see how, like, the Irish were doing it, and then the Scots were doing it, and somehow you had the two worlds kind of crash, you know, and that's leading into, like, the industrial, the early, early industrial revolution, and you get these giant stills and the formation of you no know, distilleries. Of these, of these massive, massive sort of industrial distilleries, the first of which was uh, Bushmills, so old Bushmills distillery is supposedly the one that lays claim to that, and again, take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. They just they just run that the other competition. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> who, knows, who knows exactly how it happened, what backroom deals went on, but they're the ones who kind of lay claim to that. Um, so in 1706, the Act of Union was passed, which basically unified the whole of the United Kingdom. So England, Ireland, Scotland. Well, it's all united, and so that made it much easier for them to tax everything. Money. If there's anything Money. about whiskey, the, the, the liquor world in general you need to know, is it perpetuates the movement of money. Yes, it Huge. Does. Yeah, that's what the, that's what caused the first unrest, mm -hmm. and essentially it caused a lot of uh, Scotch distilleries to either a close outright or b just go underground. Mm -hmm. And so what, what started happening was distilleries and distilling in itself ended up becoming a, a sort of home enterprise. And so a lot of people used home stills to distill their stuff and they would do it at night. And the reason they would do that at night is because under the cloak of darkness, they could, they, you, you wouldn't be able to see the smoke billowing from their houses while they're making the distillate and thus the term moonshine is born. That's, liquor also was partly responsible for the American Revolution, so there's that. Um, and that's actually a perfect segue, because that's kind of all I've got on the Scottish, the Irish thing. Um, yeah, because then you just go straight to the American colonies. You go, you go straight to the American Revolution, and where um, whiskey, which mo most of it was corn-based, um, it was easier to transport corn as basically was, corn whiskey. When did they, I thought it was starting to get rice at that time. It was because it, it rice grows here like crazy. It, it, well, during colonial times, there's a fair amount of Maryland, Pennsylvania rye, uh, rye all yeah, around the rye world. Yeah, because rye was the whiskey of the Americas because for the rye, colonies at yes. first. Yeah, because it, it, grows, it grows like a weed. Um, so. Uh, if, if, if we go back to the history of whiskey, there were something like, I think it was 90 to 120 distilleries in Ireland, and then Prohibition okay. passed, and there ended up being like three left. Oh, I mean, there's still only the like five now. And there's, there's still only five now, so there's like irreparable damage done mm -hmm. to that actual market, and, you know, we can um, see that. Yeah, same thing out of here, right? And, and, and here, the only the only distillery to continuously operate through prohibition under the auspices of, of medicinal purposes was Old Overhold, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like you said, it was medicinal. It got away with it. It was medicinal. <laughs> so you have prohibition. Things take a tank. You kind of get this rise of the, a little bit of rise of whiskey, rise of the Canadian uh, whiskeys. Vodka, uh, yet again, you're getting this influx of ideas coming from around the world, from uh, uh, military people that have been in Europe and in the Southeast Asian, uh, Asian countries, bringing like, those ideas like tiki drinks and champagne, more champagne and more wine and uh, back to the United States. And then you get the, you know, this continuation of vodka. Um, you know, the vodka martini. 
Um, and whiskey just kind of took a back seat for such a long time. I think. You know, it was like scotch was like, scotch was your, I am the, I am affluent. I am, I can sit back and get this from Scotland. Ha ha. It's the first, the first accessible whiskey that the masses could enjoy. I think We're it was, it, or? It, I, I, I think it was early 1980s. I think it was Jameson. I think Jameson's what brought whiskey back. And, you know, hmm. you don't always want to, you don't always want to go to the dance with the one you brought that that, that brought you or whatever. <laughs> but at, at at the end of the day, you got to understand a couple of things about modern drinking. I believe that Jameson brought whiskey back to this country and in in, in, in a very respectable way, even though people had been distilling things respectably for you know close to 50 years at that point back in this country on the other side of prohibition mm -hmm. right and so that that kind of gets brought back because Jameson becomes so popular in much the same way that the cosmopolitan brought cocktail culture back to this country as well uh, quick just to still this down yeah um, so American whiskey American whiskey is comprised of a, of a category that can be called American whiskey, generically, bourbon or rye. Uh, American whiskey, in order to be American whiskey, it has to be aged in you know, American oak, white, cherry, or otherwise, whatever you want to spend your money on. To make that happen, it's got to be made up of either a combination of or one of these, corn, rye, malted barley, or wheat. And again, it has to be aged in the barrel for at least a period of two months. I don't know if it has to be any longer than that, but it's always new American oak. New American oak for bourbon and rye as well. Bourbon and rye both need to be 51% a corn mash. In bourbon's case, it's 51% it's of a grain mash. In bourbon's case, it's 51% corn. In rye's case, it's 51% rye. And that's pretty much the simplest way to explain American whiskey. With regards to whiskey, you can't talk about whiskey with talk, without talking about the birth of the American cocktail. And when we talk about the birth of the American cocktail, we're going to talk about something called the whiskey cocktail. Um, the definition of cocktail in its most rudimentary form is spirit, bitter, sugar. That's it. That's all you need to make a cocktail. So, I don't know. If you're going to make a lemon drop, you should put some bitters in it. Make it a cocktail. Just say. Really? Or don't. <laughs> Seeing you're, going, how, you're going down that road? <laughs> Seeing as how we're, we're not talking about vodka, maybe I shouldn't even put that in there. But, <laughs> Whatever. So whiskey cocktail, spirit, bitter, sugar. Um, rye whiskey was typically the first whiskey used in cocktails because it grows like wildfire in the Northeast. That's where most of our settlements started out as. And so that's what we're going to start out as, having a rye whiskey cocktail. Um, you start to run into nomenclature issues with regards to cocktails because one, this country is so vast, it's still vast even for modern day travel. And you can think of it, you know, 300 years ago as being much more vast than that. So everybody knows this drink as a whiskey cocktail. Well, in about the 1870s, and, and just for frame of reference, whiskey cocktail is kind of accredited around a 1790, like right at the actual birth of this nation. When the, when the Constitution was ratified in 1789. Right around 1790 is where you get this whiskey cocktail that we know today as an old fashioned. Now, I've heard something a little different. What's that? I heard that it was because how we refine sugar now versus how we refine sugar then was different. Okay. Um, it, just because of how mass, mass industrial you know, uh, processing of sugar is now, that the way that they process this sugar then came out sweeter. Again, 
again, this is, you hear something, you read something, you try to follow the historians who study this, um, and it, you know, muddies the water a bit. Yeah. Uh, Back in the day, people also called the whiskey sour a whiskey cocktail. So, if you can imagine sitting down at the bar, you're, you're a member and you know what's what, and you ask a bartender, and let's say all the way out west in San Francisco, hey, let me get a whiskey cocktail. Bartender says, sure thing. They come back with this foamy monstrosity because they think you want a whiskey sour. A whiskey sour, for those of you who don't know, is typically uh, whiskey, whether it's rye or bourbon, lemon, sugar, egg white, bitters. That's what it is. And so they come back with this drink, and you're like, that's not what I want. I want a whiskey cocktail. Said, that is a whiskey cocktail. Okay, fine. So you, all this foamy stuff on top. Yeah, what, what, what is all this crap? <laughs> like this thing's supposed to be mostly clear. It's supposed yeah. to be translucent somewhat, and I'm just supposed to be able to see the color of the whiskey. So, fine, whatever. You take it, you drink it down, but you're a quick learner. So the next time you go to the bar, you walk up to the barkeep, you sit down, what can I get you? I'll take a whiskey cocktail the old-fashioned way. Like the, like the old-fashioned really has like the most basic uh, nomenclature, like, no, old-fashioned way. All right, and guess what? This is what we're calling it. And the old-fashioned, um, as a matter of practice, maybe not nomenclature anymore, mm -hmm. but as a matter of practice and ingredients, shares its definition with cocktail. Yeah. So that's why it, that's why it's so important because it is literally the quintessential cocktail. All right, and then from there we get into the Manhattan. And again, some bars uh, did or didn't have ice. The Manhattan started out yeah. as what we would call a reverse build. So what we know as a Manhattan now is two ounces of bourbon or rye, three quarters of an ounce to an ounce of sweet vermouth. And then, uh, you know, three to four dashes of Angostura bitters. What the Manhattan started out as was actually the reverse of that, or two ounces of sweet vermouth, an ounce of rye, the same amount of bitters. Two on one. So you have this sort of reverse palate kind of thing. Um, it might be the way uh, sugar was produced, it might be because of ice, it might be a bit of both, we're not sure. Um, but those are the three quintessential whiskey cocktails without staying here till 12 o'clock at night. And that's basically it for our presentation, a presentation on whiskey cocktails, the history of whiskey. Presentation, more of a talking about. Okay. A talk, a, a talk about. <laughs> Walk, talk about a get about a walk through, if a, you will. A get about of a whiskey, was it? I yeah. Uh, this is fun. Let's do this again sometime. A hoot nanny. No, I, well, yeah. More of a shindig. I don't know if we can put it on the level of a hoot nanny. This is about as much as I move anymore, so this is a hoot nanny. That's a lot. But this kind of leads into. A virtual cocktail class that we're going to be putting on um, next month. It's August 30th now, so technically next month, uh, September 20th. So look out for that. Hopefully, you can come in and join us and learn how to mix some drinks and pick our brains on whiskey and all of the flavors that go with whiskey, which, in my opinion, is all of the flavors. I mean, we could literally have been here for another couple hours. There's just so much to take apart. And Maggie wanted that. She begged for it, and we said no. Maggie's behind the camera. Maggie's she's shaking her head. <laughs> she's <laughs> laughing at us. You can hear her laughing right now. <laughs> All, All right. right. So thank you so much, folks. Merci. Thank you. And have a wonderful day.